Welcome to another episode of Crazy Train with Jasmine St. Clair. It's been a fun time lately getting to speak to all of these hot female wrestlers. But it's also a lot of fun when you kind of haven't spoken to anyone in a while. And, you know, you just kind of keep up on social media and you see how happy and beautiful and fulfilling her life is. So I have to tell you about Crystal Marshall, like how we actually met. This is really funny. It's kind of embarrassing. So years ago, there was a specific wrestler. Um, and I guess I kind of made an impression on him somehow or another. Because he went to Crystal Marshall when they were working together at a different different federation, the WWE. Um, and he said to her, yeah, you know, I guess this is really this one girl that I really liked a lot. She's crazy though, but I just think it kind of could have gone somewhere. Did I just do that accent? Oh shit. Uh, anyway, I'm not gonna say his name. So she remembered me because of my name being brought up in this conversation with this sad wrestler. <laughs> he looks kind of like Kid Rock, but <clears throat> When she met me in person, she told me about the story. So anyhow, it's like a few years after we've met, here we are in present day. And um, I don't know, he seems to be an ongoing theme in our conversation. So maybe there's something there, maybe there isn't. But we talk a lot on this episode about everything. But especially like one thing a lot of us have problems with those of us that, you know, have been in the public eye is dating and guys. And like, I feel as if there's something in the air with this like shitty guy or like guys turning shitty as of late. I have no idea what the hell's going on. But it felt very therapeutic to speak to her. So without further ado, um, hopefully we see her back in the ring soon too or more signings. Let's welcome the gorgeous Bajan Bombshell, Crystal. Marshall. I know it's like I don't know when I'm supposed to call my therapist. I just do it like at my time, but I only call for one reason because he's hot. So okay. Uh I don't think it's supposed to work that way. But if it's working for you, there's no judgment. <laughs> there's no judgment. I know. Now, if it wasn't a hot therapist, I don't think I'd be in therapy at all. Like, seriously, I, I don't know if I really need it, but yeah, I mean, but you look gorgeous. I'm so happy you. you came you. on you to the show. Thank you. The skin. the skin is giving me so much life right now, girl. Yes. <laughs> the skin. Let's see. The skin is versed skincare and it's like all vegan, cruelty free. And I normally don't believe in that stuff. Reverse gave me this whole like gift box. So honestly, I got on this stuff like three weeks ago. And wow. then it's human growth factor cells that I'm using and Morpheus A. I've done like three Morpheus A treatments. I saw that you posted one on your story, Morpheus A. And I, I had so many questions about it. It looks fabulous. It's like, you know, we're getting better with time and it's a little bit more effort, you know? So you're going to have to shoot me a text about all that. And by the way, my dog, he's a big B-A-R-K-E-R. -E so if woof, he woof. does just keep going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You, I, so every day I see your photos on Instagram, you're always smiling and happy. And there's yeah. one specific photo I saw over the weekend. You, I can't describe the smile. It was just this pretty like Caribbean style smile, which I'm going to ask you, where do you get the name Bajan Bombshell from? Or did I say, is it Bajan or Bajan? Bajan, Bajan. So my family is actually I'm a first generation American and my family is from the West Indies. They're from Barbados. So people from Barbados, um, we refer to ourselves as Bajan. But if you want to do it correctly it's Barbadian but you know if you're from the culture and from the island it's Bajan so that's where I got it from yeah Bajan bombshell I say Bajan bombshell yeah. I could kind of do it right my dad <laughs> well my grandfather's family is they're from Suriname and that's in the West Indies it's a Dutch colony so we had this band called the Dutchie Brothers they're like the swinging calypso band so I got into Calypso yeah. when I was a kid. It was so much fun. Um, it's fun. Like, I just love the area. But 
a lot of people want to know what you're doing with yourself these days. And I know it's a bunch of stuff. So I just have to let you take it over from here as I sip my espresso. Uh, I feel like I'm doing so much of everything, but not anything at the same time. Because I feel like I'm just, you know, doing a little bit of this, a little bit of that. So actually, I just moved to the Dallas area from Denver. And I lived in Denver for 15 years. So it's a big change and I love it. I love it here. Um, I've been here since August and um, I, in Denver, I was doing hair, I had a studio that I owned that I managed for gosh, the past about 10 years off and on. Um, so yeah, I moved here. I recently divorced. I moved here because I wanted a fresh start. It was just like one of those things where it's like, I was in this pool and I wasn't moving forward. I wasn't drowning. I wasn't moving backwards. I was just stagnant. And I was just thinking to myself, it is time for a change. Like something's got to happen. I've got to like shake things up. So um, I talked with the kid, my kid's dad and he was like, hey, I'm down. Like, let's just go. And, you know, it was scary. I left everything behind. I sold everything. I just uprooted myself. And I said, you know what? I'm going to rechange my story. I'm going to you know, try something new. So I've been here for three months. And uh, since I moved here, I launched an OnlyFans page. And it's not your typical OnlyFans page, because I don't, there's no nudity, there's nothing like that. It's just, it's really pretty sexy pictures that typically people would, you know, promote themselves on Instagram, but only it's exclusively for my fans and followers and, you know, people that have supported me through wrestling and all that. So they get to have something that's exclusive for them. And it's, interactive so I can connect with them on there and such so that's pretty much it and just taking care of the kids and I am starting another project um and hopefully I can get it out by the holidays it is a safe clean burning candle company so I'm hoping to have hoping to have everything up and ready to go before the holidays but if we don't hit our milestones it will be out in the new year so those are some fun projects that I have coming down the pipeline. I love candles. Okay. And I don't go casting like spells and stuff like that on people. All I have to say is I hope your dick falls off and somehow something to that effect will happen to a man. Um, so <laughs> why is there so much well, I want to say this to? <laughs> I just want to tell you this. If that, that is your intention, this might be the candle company for you because what makes us different is that the names, are you familiar with OPI nail polishes? Yeah, I love them. I have OPI. I have ballet slippers yeah. on and I, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'll just say this. If you have a little bit of grit to yourself, um, this is the candle company for you. So I'm not going to talk too much about it, but it's definitely going to be fun. It's definitely going to be an awesome gift idea for sure. Do you so have one I will keep home record? <laughs> please that's my candle is wreck that home okay it's got to be like fiery like copal like an opal red then it has to smell like gushy or something like that like gushy guilty that's what wreck there, that home smells know, like jasmine i will make a candle specifically for you i promise you that i will, I will make one just, there is something for everybody <laughs> No, that's what I like. That's like those greeting cards they have where they, it's a breakup greeting card. So mm -hmm. I once had this sugar daddy years and years ago, and this is really crass what I did. So we're breaking up, breaking up. So I bought him flowers on the credit card he gave me and I got him one of those cards. He thought it was inappropriate, but hey, at least I spent the last, the last 50 bucks on that card on you. So that was thought, that was very thoughtful. It's like the gift that keeps on giving. I always wondered, <laughs> you know, why is it that beautiful girls such as yourself, you always get involved in beauty and things that smell nice. So I think it's it's very healthy, this whole co-parenting thing. Has that been a very difficult thing for you to do, um, this co-parenting? You know what? I will say this. It's parenting in general is not easy. And then you have two people that were involved in the wrestling community. We have egos. We have you know, we're different, you know, I will say it has gotten easier with age and with understanding like that. It's, it does not come easy for sure. Would I have more kids? Maybe, but I think I've been doing this so long with him that it's hard to see how I would co-parent with somebody else. Does that make sense? Oh, a hundred percent. You kind of figured it out, you know? So 
it is what it is. But um, but yeah, no, um, I want to hear more about this story. This is I'm so intrigued about the gift in the with the credit card. Oh, that thing. Oh, he's an idiot. He couldn't even get his thing up. Like I have to tell you, there's this one photo oh, I have God. of us in a hot tub in Sedona. So there was no sex involved as much as you can believe that because a, a daddy who can't get his thing up can't get any sugar. So I think it was more of an emotional thing because I, I tend yeah. to have more of an emotional pull on people. Um, it's probably a Scorpio thing or being an only child. So it was just really annoying. And it just, it's just, I was in Switzerland. Oh no, he was in Switzerland going somewhere. He didn't hear from me for six or seven hours. So I wake up to these text messages. Why? Just tell me why, why? I'm like, huh? Okay. Z that's what's after why. Right. So he's like, Oh, I just forgot to take my meds. I'm like, ah, oh, okay. You just, I said, take more meds, please. Well, when I take my meds and I can't get, you know, I can't, I have problems with my, uh, you know, with my stamina. I'm like, no, just take more meds. Cause you need it for your, <laughs> for your psycho brains. But yes, uh, it was a six, it was a six month meaningful relationship. Um, <clears throat> And it was a very, uh, it was very toxic. It's more toxic than my real life relationships with some of the guys I've dated. And I think like dating and probably for you, is it hard meeting someone um, at all? I, Cause I, I can only imagine. You know, I don't know if it is the time or the type of men and women, the way that we are now, but I don't remember dating being this difficult when I was younger. But then I think back, I was so stupid. You know, I'd be like, oh, is this guy tall? Do you have big muscles? Like, you know, is he cute? You know, that was kind of the standard. And I guess we go older, we expect different things. We want different things. But dating, I will say this. Okay, I like very masculine men. I like very masculine men that are assertive. I, I love that. I need that. I'm a very strong-willed woman. I am very opinionated. I can, you know, it's a lot of, it's a lot of feminine energy. And it's chaotic. And people think that feminine feminine energy is like demure. Not always. It's very chaotic. And you need that strong masculine energy to kind of navigate things. So I will say this. Dating in Dallas is exponentially bit better than in Colorado. I have found that. But that's not to say it's good. Like there's some weird stuff going on between men and women right now. And it's just this disconnection. I don't know what it is. But it's just not working for me. Um, I have met some interesting, some great guys, but you know, in those situations you really want to take your time. So I don't know, girl. And it's interesting though, because you're saying that that relationship with your sugar daddy was more talk was toxic or more toxic than normal dating. And I kind of feel like those types of relationships have the potential to be healthier because we all know what the expectations are, right? Like, you know what the boundaries are. And I feel like the problem with modern dating is that nobody wants to communicate. Everybody wants to operate in this shade of gray without being very transparent about what they want and what they're willing to give. You know, on the phone. Yeah, they, they do this. This is what they do. And this is how they meet on a phone. Half the time. I yeah, can't do that. But it's convenient though, right? Um, I don't know. Like I always meet people in person and I went out on a date with a guy from Norway a few years ago. Um, I remember him. I where, remember no, there's him. a few. There's a few. This one didn't come to the states, but he's another one. He was a good, yeah, maybe, but he had a problem because I was wrestling. Then he sees me in XPW again. He's like, something's wrong with your brain that you're doing this. I'm like, okay, well, let me tell you what's wrong with you. Where shall I start, you dumbass man bun bitch? So I just, men are scared of women today. Yes. Because they are demasculinized by a younger generation. And they are afraid. Let's say some guy says, hey, hey, hot body or whatever to you. I can't think of a better makeup. You might try to say he's sexually harassing you. So they're afraid to be masculine. I, I love masculine men. Uh, but I think this whole thing these days with these guys and girls, I, I can't do this because it's too much of this and I'm not here, you know, and I'd much rather be here with wow. you than on here. Plus, I get really psychotic. I'd wonder, who is he talking to? Is he still on there? And the next thing you know, I'll be going through the phone, kind of. See, I don't know. I've gotten to this point where I'm so aloof. The second that there is just a sliver of inconsistency, I'm out. I'm out. I'm not interested. And at that point, they're like, oh, 
oh, like trying to get it back. Like, and it, it's not that like, I don't care. It's just that like, I value my time too much. You know, like if you, if you're connected with a guy, you talk to a guy, you see him. If I don't hear from him and he hasn't made plans to see me again within three days, I'm disconnected. I'm not interested anymore, you know? And I feel like these younger generations of girls are, they're okay with that. You know, they're okay with that. Like, and I've gone out with a few guys and they're like, you know, it's very discouraging on our end because, you know, I want to open the door for women. I want to pull the chair out for women. I want to pay the tab. But a lot of these younger women, this new generation, oh, I can do it myself. Let's split. I'm like, girl, come on. This is the problem. So I don't know. I'm, I'm honestly not so focused right now on trying to find that person. I'm just trying to enjoy myself. And if it happens, it happens. And it's hard. It's, it's pretty tough too, but I'm definitely having fun. There's that. Well, in Texas, I think they might be more old school. Like I like the old school guys. And I think that a lot of these younger girls don't know what the hell they're doing. I told an Uber driver the other day and she's like, well, I want to get dressed up and stuff, but I feel like I should pay half. I'm like, then why are you getting dressed up? Stay home, wear your fucking, sl wear your yep. fucking slippers, wear your pajamas and leave your hair and rag them up in shape and you can go out. It's perfectly fine. They don't put the effort in. Now I just realize who you remind me of, Crystal. You're going to hate this, but I have to tell you because she's very pretty. She's in Arizona. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you know what I'm going to say? It's the K word. You look, a, you resemble Carrie Lake a little bit. She's very pretty. She's yeah. running for governor. Oh, I have no idea who that is. She's really, really pretty. And she's very much about um, kids, kids safety, the whole um, agenda of, uh, you know, making it safe there. But she's very pretty and very well spoken. But you look like her and she's, it, trust me, it's a compliment. But if I told you, you look like George Bush, that's not a compliment. I told a girl that one. <laughs> she looked like George Bush. She had this beady, freaking seedy, like mouse eyes. It's like, ugh. But do you think you're ever going to wrestle again? Like, here's the thing. So I spoke to Jazz. I spoke to quite a few different wrestlers that are um, not fully Caucasian. And they find that even with WWE, they didn't really promote wrestlers that were um, not fully Caucasian to the best way possible. And I don't yeah. think she got a fair shake at anything. There should have been a Jazz. Yeah. Song. You know what? I'll tell you. I, I do agree with a lot of what Jazz said. But I'm going to say something. And a lot of people, I'm probably going to catch a lot of shit for it. But I think that in the wrestling business, and in a lot of businesses that are geared towards men and their entertainment, you have to understand the demographic. And I think the demographic is predominantly white male that are viewers in this. And I feel as though certain companies believe that a certain type of woman is more palatable for white males because they're selling to that. And I think that it's different now than when I was there. It's different, way different now than when Jazz was there. I think that she was so far ahead of her time that had she come out now, it would be a different story because the world is changing. Um, I do believe that, but I still like, I love to see the progress that's been made for women of color in wrestling, but there's still a ways to go. You know, it's not like rocket science here. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. But jazz is, she deserves a doll. She deserves, I, is she in the Hall of Fame yet? I don't think she is, right? Is she in the Hall of Fame? Well, she should be. You know, there's so many things that, that she's deserving. That woman needs her flowers. We should give Jazz her flowers. You know, if Jazz isn't there, they wouldn't be me. There'd be no Sasha Banks. There'd be no, none of us, really. So I hope that, that she gets that for sure. Yeah, yeah, she really opened up a door. the doors for a lot of women. And do you ever see yourself getting back into the ring any way possible? Shape or I would love to. You know, like... The, the cool thing about like when you get older, you look back and you're like, fuck, if I could do this over again, I'd do X, Y, Z. And I still feel like there's so much more that I have to, to explore with wrestling. There is. And it's like getting in the ring or just being involved in the business. I feel like that was some, that's something that like I would love to do. Now, whether it would happen, I don't know. But um, yeah, I would absolutely love to for sure. Yep. It's come a long way. And with that said, I know that I did watch you in WWE. What even got you started with wrestling? I know everyone's asked you this, but I haven't asked you that. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I came from an era where the company was looking externally. They were looking for 
the models. They're looking for the filler, the fluff. And that's what I was, you know, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that's, I came in to do that. Um, and along the way, I, I fell in love with the business. Um, it's, it's the craziest thing because like people that like friends that I have that are not a part of wrestling, when I talk about it, they're like, it's so weird to me that you're a part of that. And I'm like, whoa, God, you still talk to people? Yeah, like once you're in, it's like a gang. Once you get jumped in, you're in. You can't leave. You can't lose your colors. Um, so yeah, like I'm, I'm super grateful for the business. Um, I got in as a model. I was on Deal No Deal. Uh, and I shot their pilot. What was that? Two, 2005, 2006, around that time. I don't remember which year it was. But so we shot their pilot. And my manager at the time was like, well, we don't really have anything else coming down the pipeline. I know that uh, WWE is doing a diva search. And I was like, that's it. I want to do it. And she's like, well, their contracts are pretty ironclad. I can't really help you negotiate. It is what it is. You take it. You take what they give you. And I was like, I, I absolutely want to do that. And the backstory behind that is growing up, I was not a huge wrestling fan. However, that was the one thing that my grandmother and I shared because she loved WWF. So when I would go visit her, we used to watch it together. And she used to love Junkyard Dog, Book the Brawler. Those are all of her favorites. So when I had that opportunity, I was like, you know what? Like, I feel like this is the right thing. And that's how I found myself wrestling. So from there, I actually moved to McDonough, Georgia. And I went to Deep South Wrestling with Bill DeMott. And between Bill and Finley, they taught me how to, to wrestle and how to bump and all that stuff. And that's when I first met Kid Cash, actually, because he was down there for a little, he went there for a little bit. <laughs> yep. So that's kind of how I found my way. <laughs> so about that Kid Cash, was that the, well, uh, well, yeah, he's very nice. So this is very interesting. The first time I met Crystal Marshall, I'm not going to mention the wrestler's name, but he knows who he is. She was speaking to a specific wrestler. And he was telling her about this crazy girl he met, okay? And he liked her, but he just wasn't sure where it was going to go. So I'm just warning people, that said woman was me that was crazy. So it means I'm crazy in a good way, but I'm not like psychotic, like I'm going to pull a knife on you or something unless you ask me to. But yeah, um, Kit Cash is a really nice person. I'm surprised. I don't know what he's doing now, but he's one of those people that helps you. He helped me when I was working for Jimmy Hart. And um, I think it's amazing what you've done. You know, I think it's great that you started as a diva. My grandmother watched wrestling too. That's how I got turned on to it. That's so crazy. Can I tell you something funny, by the way? I was just oh, yes. thinking about this. So when I first came to the roster, I remember being just like, so like, just fucking intimidated by all the girls. Like, I was like, oh, there's Trish, there's Lita. Like, ooh, like I want to ruffle any feathers. But there was one person that I was legit fearful of you me I was yes I was so intimidated I was like oh my god it was the ECW girls it was you it was Francine I was like, so when Cass told me about you I was like oh my god like I need to like <laughs> cross my teeth and dot my eyes with this one but you were like the sweetest thing ever but totally intimidated I was just yeah so Wait, I, what, I don't know why what, what did he say? I'm going to go. Where does he live now? I'm going down there. I'm getting on the plane. I'm yes. going to smack oh, him and give him a big old he kiss. He didn't say anything bad. I know. Just like, you know, like, she's she's tough. She's she's a bad one. You know, you watch out for her. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> no, he's right. In a way, because, okay, here, I'll be honest with you. I had a pro like, when they were doing the diva search, I'm not going to be a total, like, jerk about this. I was like, why the hell? Do they go look for these freaking these girls who can model to go be on WWE? Yeah. I hope they get I hope they get their asses kicked. Okay, fine. But you were cool. You know the other the other ones I met were cool, but okay, some of them were not cool. cool. I'm cool. Yeah, because Kid Cash <laughs> said it was crazy. Everyone and that is Kid Cash saying that, and it's fine. I'll tell you something about Kid Cash. He's cute. Mm hmm. Well, I will say this though. Like by no means do I consider myself a wrestler. I don't. I'm a personality that's been a part of the business. But I get it now. Like now that I've kind of been affiliated with the wrestling business, now I see these young girls come up and I'm like, oh, where'd you come from? Okay, we'll see, we'll see, you know? Um, so I, I get it, I get it. There's no hard feelings. So um, yeah. I, anyway, had no back to I had no idea you started off as a model. I always thought you were 
but maybe you came from Deep South Wrestling or something. I did. I did. Right. I That's what so, I thought. I did the diva search and uh, John Laranitis was like, hey, listen, we'd love to work with you, but you're not coming up here. You need, if you want to be a part of this business, you need to, you know, leave deal, no deal and prove to us that you're interested in learning about the business. And then he sent me to Deep South Wrestling and I was there for a year. So I was on the roster and then on my days off, I was, you know, with Bill DeMott. But what's interesting, though, is some girls had to go to developmental and other girls are just brought right up. So I never really understood what the rhyme or reason for that was and what they saw versus what they didn't see. But, um, yeah, so I was grateful that I went, though. Um, yeah, it was a good experience. It's yep. like a drug, I think, with wrestling, because I'm back with XPW and it was just. When you go into the locker room, it's like, it's a very special place. And there are a couple of super hot guys that work there, <clears throat> but that's all they are is they're hot. What? <laughs> they're too old. They're like 38, 39 years old, way too old for me. So <laughs> they, uh, you know, but they're there, they're doing something. And I think we all get each other. What would you say? Do you think it's hard to date someone that's in the business as well? Like there's jealousy. Yeah. It is the most complex thing. Because on one hand, it's like my advice to any woman, anybody, forget women, anybody getting in the wrestling business, do not shit where you eat. Do not get involved. Focus on your career. Get your paper. That's it. But you're with these people all the time. And then here's the other thing. You go out with some normie that's not a part of the business. They don't get it. They don't understand it. So it's like, it's so, it's tricky. It's, it's really, really hard. And you know what I didn't like about it is like, all right, there are some younger girls that were in the business, right? And they literally grew up in the business, but they had such a bad rap because they're dating, they dated a few different people. Well, how do you expect, what do you think is going to happen? They spent most of these years where you're dating different people, figuring out what you like, what you don't like on the road all the time. Of course, they're going to date multiple people, you know, um, but it's that double standard. Of course, it's like the girls can't do it the guys can do it. So I don't know. I don't know. I can tell you that I don't ever see myself dating a worker again. I just, I don't know, not at this stage in the game, you know, but I would like to date somebody that is older. Cause like now I feel like it's a whole bunch of young dudes. I swear. Like if I try to go on like a dating app or even like on Instagram, it's guys that are like in their mid twenties. Okay to like 30 that want to date me. And yeah, they're cute, but it's like, I don't know, do you have that issue with a bunch of young dudes trying to date you? I hope you're enjoying the ride on Crazy Train with Jasmine St. Clair podcast. So if you are, do me a huge, huge favor. Woo! Please go ahead. Go on to Apple Podcasts or Spotify or whatever, but Apple's great. Give me a nice rating and review. Send me a screenshot and I promise you, I will send you a special goodie bag. So please rate and review Crazy Train with Jasmine St. Clair podcast. And in exchange for that, once I see the DM with the review and your name and address, I will get those gift bags out to you. I'm not going to tell you what's in it. 